Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my mini art talks. It's Janet Mandel. I'm glad to have you with me. I haven't made a talk in about two and a half weeks. I've been so, so busy, but I'm delighted to be back. And I was captured by this image, which I found when I was kind of noodling around on the internet. It's by an artist I had never heard of, George Hendrik Breitner. And he's known as a painter of life on the street, which he's really depicting here, particularly <clears throat> street life in Amsterdam, where he was from. Now, in his younger years, apparently, when he was in The Hague, he met up with Vincent van Gogh, who was painting there as well. But he thought van Gogh was concerned with his own experiences of reality, where he, Breitner, opted for a pure and bare reality. And we can see that in this wonderful um, Impressionist painting. He's using a tremendously fluent style of brushwork, and he definitely succeeded in capturing that fleeting moment and the atmosphere of uh, city life. Now, his work is not as sunny and colorful as perhaps the French Impressionists that we're used to, but he was from Amsterdam, so he prefers the gray, rainy weather, the snow, the wind, and perhaps the dark days of autumn and winter uh, of his native Netherlands. But if we look at the color scheme that he, he's using here, this very black and maybe pearly gray scheme contains a multiplicity of very vibrant nuances and makes this really an amazing work. So not only is he capturing that gust of wind as it whips through the city and through the, the uh, skirts of these women, but he's also giving us this, this very vibrant and beautiful impressionist scene. But let's go back a little bit more in history. We'll start with Jan Porcellus. This is from the 17th century. It ships in a strong wind. And he's a Dutch marine painter. And at this time, though, most Dutch marine painters were really painting the grandeur of ships that perhaps were engaged in great battles. But uh, Porcellus does not do this. He is really focusing simply on nature, that amazing sky and the wind whipping through the waters. You can really see that here. And so this was a radical break from uh, Dutch marine uh, paintings as they had existed before. And if we take a closer look at that water, we see this is just any ship. It's not a particularly historical ship. It's just a scene of nature. And uh, he's showing us again how the wind is whipping through the, that water. Now, we can't talk about <clears throat> marine painting without talking about Turner. And Turner painted many, many pictures exploring very extreme weather at sea. And here we have a steamboat in the center, and it's shown really at the center of a whirling storm. Now, there's a story that Turner used to tie himself to the mast of a ship during a storm so that he could then uh, go back and paint the scene from memory. And that's probably not true. But it's a great way, it was a great way to explain what appears to be what is really an uncanny ability of Turner's to completely absorb himself within a depiction of the natural world. And he has certainly done that here. And he, he in, imbues the scene with almost a spiritual quality. And I think one of the ways he does that is, even though you have the roiling storm here, you do see a little bit of patch of blue, perhaps, um, in the sky. Now, this painting really I found to be very unusual. This is by Jean-Francois Millet, and it's called A Gust of Wind. And <clears throat> Millet is, is most well known, of course, for his very serene paintings of, of dignified peasant farmers standing in a field or their, their labor, their dignified labor. But here he's created a totally different, very unsettling, eerie image of a storm. And look at his peasant that's in this painting. Instead of taking center stage, his peasant here is in a very unnatural position. It's almost as if he's shielding himself against the wind and trying to avoid the, these branches that have just broken off of the tree and are, are coming after him as if they're, they're chasing him. And it's a, a kind of a, a real danger here that Mie is, is uh, depicting for us. And look at the tree itself. It's just been torn right out of its roots. And if we look here at a little bit closer image of it, to me, it appears almost human, that these are like arms reaching out, and it's kind of shrieking in agony at the, the ferocity of the wind here. 
Now, this is by a painter also that I didn't know, um, Antonio Pereiras. He was a Brazilian. He was a plein air painter, and he had studied in Italy and Paris, and then came back to Brazil and started an art school, which is now a museum. And he is, again, showing us the intensity and the, the violence, really, of the wind. But I, before I talk about that, look at this figure on the road. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. It could have a couple of different interpretations. In a way, you could say he's huddled against the wind, but he doesn't seem to be buffeted by the wind. He almost seems to be ignoring it. So I found that to be interesting. But of course, it's this part of the painting. You know, it's called the windstorm where you can really see uh, the arching and curving uh, branches of the tree that are just being pummeled by the wind. Now, contrast to that is this lovely painting by Claude Monet, Poplar's Wind Effect. And there's so much intimacy, I think, and poetry in, in this landscape. You could almost see um, Monet floating down the river Epte, which is where this was painted by his, his place in Giverny. And he was in his floating studio that he had. And you can almost see him floating down the river and looking at the scene. And he's got such a keen impressionist eye. And he's caught the finest nuances of change from the wind in the sky there, as you can see. And the trees are just bending slightly in that gentle force of the wind. Such an interesting work. And then this one was quite startling and shocking to me by Kaya, but I had never seen anything like this in, in his oeuvre. And I, I see this as kind of a study of horizontal design, right? He's got the bands of the sky, and then this landscape, and then the water, and then a little bit more of the ground, the earth, but it's all interrupted. It's almost like it's this clothesline is intruding on the image, and the, the di different depictions of the clothing on the clothesline, to me, only lo almost look anthropomorphic, as if they're, they're, they have a life of their own. And that's because of the wind, the way he's used his incredible brushwork to show us uh, on the, clo the clothes on the clothesline that are just being buffeted by the wind. You can hear them flapping uh, in the breeze. Quite an interesting work. Now, this is Winslow Homer, Hurricane Bahamas. And he, it's a watercolor, so he's this very free, fluid brushwork, and it's following the direction of the wind. It's conveying the, the swaying of those palm trees and the movement of all of the clouds. So um, Homer has really exploited the fluidity of watercolor. He's just using it to great effect to achieve what he wants to achieve on the canvas. Now, this artist does a very similar thing. This is Joaquin Sorolla sailing vessels on a breezy day of Valencia, but instead of doing it with watercolor, he's doing it with oil paints. And not just any oil paints, he's really using a very, very thick impasto to show us the effect of this wild, wild wind, uh, wind over the sky and the water and the sails on the sailboats and the sand. And even when we look at the people, they're on the beach and they are, are fighting against the wind and we want to wrap ourselves around in a warm blanket and huddle with somebody we love to keep out of this ferocious wind that he's shown us. Now, one of my favorite um, painters of uh, this period was Chaim Soutine, and he's shown us a windy day at Auxerre from 1939, and we know what was going on in the world in 1939. Now, Duncan Phillips, who is the founder of the Phillips Collection in Washington, D.C., which is where this painting resides now, he once wrote that a Soutine landscape reflected, quote, cataclysmic upheaval, as if he had a premonition of our world's agony of total war. And in fact, when Soutine painted this painting, he was literally running away from the Nazis. And this painting, it just churns with terrifying anxiety and upheaval. And, you know, Soutine loved trees. He loved to paint trees. And they were always, they always represented the turmoil that he felt in his own soul, which was tortured most of the time. And in this picture, you can really see the branches being tossed by the wind and can almost hear the whistling of that wind through that, through those branches and looking up at this very moody, dark sky. 
Now, the other interesting thing about this are these two figures down here at the bottom. There are two children walking on the road. And this is something that he paints over and over again at this time, children on a path coming down like a winding road. And their smallness in this picture in particular really accentuates the tremendous height of the trees and suggests, I think, that the future down this road that they're on is really fraught with tremendous danger. And I just want you to take a, a just a closer look at his brushwork here and all of the twisting and the swirling and that, again, the, the use of impasto to create this wonderful effect. And, you know, they're green, the trees are green, but he gives these little dashes of red, the complementary color to kind of make it pop and, and make us almost startle and, and take notice of what he's doing. Now, this is Andrew Wyeth, Dodges Ridge. And he, of course, we know that the Wyeth is celebrated for his very realistic portrait, portrayals of nature. But to me, it's, it's always very paradoxical because even though they're hyper-realistic, he always seems to capture the mystery of the natural world, which to me is a very interesting thing. And we can see this here. We have, there's an old mast of an abandoned boat and it's got a torn and use, uh, useless sail and the tatters of that sail are kind of uh, flapping again in the breeze and there's a very dark and ominous sky there. And then this one also by Wyeth, this one is a watercolor. The previous one was egg tempera, which is his preferred, I, I would say, um, uh, medium. But now he's using watercolor and he's here depicting a hill, a little hill and some tall grass. And the, the grass is wafting in the whispering wind. And the whole scene is rendered again in this gray monotone, very much like that first painting I showed you. But again, there's a variety of shades and tints. And Wyeth makes us feel as though we are really standing on that little hill and we are looking at that dried grass and we're watching it struggle to stand firm against the, the moving air, and we can totally feel his engagement with nature here. So each of the works I've talked about uh, today, and we're, we're marveling at the artist's ability to capture what is really transcendent, which is air, to capture this and put it on canvas. And I think the artists that I've shown you today have really succeeded in doing that. So enjoy your autumn and enjoy your uh, windy and blustery weather. And if you do have the time and you are on Facebook, go over to the little search box up there and put uh, Janet Mandel Art Talks in there and my Art Talks page will come up and you can join me there where I post uh, interesting things that are happening in the art world along with um, uh, cartoons and, and funny things. And then I also um, have uploaded all of these mini Art Talks onto um, YouTube Many of you may be watching on YouTube now. And if you go to the search bar and put Janet Mandel Art Talks in there, please um, uh, also uh, subscribe. You know, you can hit the button that says subscribe and then hit the bell and you'll get notifications. And also, if you hit the all button on the bell, then you should, should get notifications every time I upload something new. And I'm also on Instagram, Art Talks with Janet. You can join me there. And also I do have a web page. And as I said, you don't have to memorize this long URL. Just go to Google and put Janet Mandel Art Talks in there and you look for this wonderful logo. And uh, that's me. And on the Art Talks page down here, there are different um, uh, buttons in the menu and hit schedule. And then you can see uh, my schedule for upcoming uh, longer form art talks that I do at libraries and adult schools and museums and other venues. So again, thank you so much for joining me today uh, for Art Talks. And please come back again and um, stay safe and wear your masks and socially distance. And also, um, I am recording this about two weeks before the election. So everybody, please go out and vote. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye now.